This is the complete presentation for the Triple AI 2021 paper, Hydra, Hypergradient Data Relevance Analysis for Interpreting Deep Neural Networks. I am Boyang Li from Nyang Technological University, Singapore. This is joint work with Yuan Yuan Chen, Han Yu, Peng Cheng Wu, and Chun Yan Miao. Hydraw is a method for interpreting deep neural networks, which are known for their black box nature. It is often difficult to understand why a neural network may make certain predictions. And this is particularly problematic for mission critical applications like medicine and law, where the reasoning to reach the decision can be as important as the decision itself. Oftentimes, it is necessary to explain predictions made by deep neural networks in order to gain the trust from the public. In addition, good interpretability can enhance the training, debugging, and auditing of deep neural networks. In this paper, we're interested in a particular type of interpretation, one that attributes network predictions to the data that the network was trained on. After the network has been trained, we gave it a test data point. As an example, here we have a picture of a goldfish with a ground truth label. We want to answer the following questions. Which data points help the network make the correct prediction? And which data points prevent the network from making the correct prediction? We now introduce a formal definition of the problem. Given a training data set, we want to learn a model F, parameterized by W, by minimizing a loss function that contains the empirical risk and an L2 regularization term. The empirical risk is the average loss over training data. Each training data point has a weight, which is 1 over the training data size plus a variable epsilon i. We set epsilon i to 0, but it is important that we have epsilon. The reason will become clear a bit later. We use the familiar gradient descent technique to optimize the loss function. At every iteration, we subtract the gradient multiplied by a small learning rate, eta t, from the current parameter wt minus y. And this gives us wt. We repeat this procedure for big t steps, which gives us the final parameter w big t. We also consider gradient descent with momentum. Here the historical gradients are accumulated into the momentum vt. Then the parameter wt minus 1 is changed by the momentum. Here p is a coefficient that is used to control the strength of the accumulated momentum. We have a labeled test set, d-test. We can compute its test loss as the sum of losses over individual test data points. To understand how training data contribute to the test predictions, we can simply look at how test loss changes when we change the data weight epsilon. This is computed as the negative of the derivative of the test loss with respect to epsilon. When increasing the data weight, epsilon decreases the test loss. We say that the training data contribute positively to the test prediction and vice versa. If we set epsilon to minus one over d train, this effectively removes the training data point from the training loss. Using a first-order Taylor expansion, the change in test loss is simply CI in equation 7. That's why we use CI as the contribution of the i-th training data point. The real difficulty lies in how to compute the total derivative of the test loss with respect to epsilon i. The test loss depends on W big T, which in turn depends on epsilon i. In the SJD updates, big t, W big t 
depends on w big t minus 1 and the training gradient, which is where epsilon i appears. Therefore, it boils down to computing the total derivative of w big t with respect to epsilon. We need to track the effects of epsilon t across all SGD update steps. If we do the proper calculus and write down everything as a recurrence equation, we have equation 9. For the initial condition, the parameter w0 is initialized randomly, so it does not depend on epsilon i. Therefore, the initial condition for the recurrence is that dw0 over d epsilon i be in 0. Note that we have introduced the Hessian term in equation 9, and this is because the gradient term is a function of wt minus 1. So when we compute the derivative of this gradient term against wt minus 1, this will lead to a second order derivative. Under SGD with momentum, things are slightly different. We now have two recurrence equations, one for the total derivative of the momentum t term v, and one for the model parameter w. These are shown as the equation group 11. For initial conditions, again, the initial momentum term v0 does not depend on epsilon i. So we have the additional initial condition dv0 over d epsilon i being 0. We compare and contrast our method against the pioneering work of influence function by Cole and Leon 2017. Their problem formulation is very similar to ours. They also want to compute the total derivative like we do, but their technique is to use the local Hessian matrix to approximate this total derivative. This technique has two drawbacks. First, it performs a local approximation using the local curvature information. This ignores the influence of training data throughout the training process. Second, modern neural networks make use of millions of parameters or more. Therefore, the Hessian matrix can be extremely large. Although there are some workarounds to compute the Hessian vector product instead of the Hessian directly, dealing with Hessian matrices in general remains difficult. Compared to influence functions, Hydra accounts for changes in the entire SGD trajectory after epsilon changes. Since the optimization may take an enormous number of SGD steps, a small change in epsilon can accumulate over time and result in large changes. We illustrate this intuition with a picture of the lost surface. SGD optimization moves downhill with some stochastic perturbation. Before the change in epsilon, this optimization ends up in local minimum number one. However, if we have a small change in epsilon at the right moment, we may take an entirely different path, which leads to a different local minimum. Extrapolating using the Hessian matrix at local minimum number one, which captures the local curvature, cannot account for this kind of trajectory change. The technique of Hara, Nintendo, and Meahara does account for the optimization trajectory, but still relies on the Hessian matrix, which is difficult to work with. We refer interest to the readers to the complete discussion of related work in the paper, including other network interpretation methods, the hypergradient technique, and its applications. In order to simplify computation and avoid dealing with the Hessian matrix, we propose an approximation technique that removes the need for the Hessian matrix. This method is really simple. Just drop the Hessian term so that the above equation 9 becomes equation 13. Similarly, for SGD with momentum, 
equation 11 becomes equation 14, where the Hessian term is dropped. The, ap the approximation does simplify computation, but how does it affect the accuracy of the derivative? We perform some theoretical analysis. Under some moderate conditions, we have proven that the approximation error is bounded. In addition, if the learning rate eta t decays exponentially, the approximation error diminishes as we spend more time in the optimization. For details of this proof, please refer to the supplemental material of the paper. In the experiments, we use three image classification datasets. The first is MNIST, which is for classification of grayscale images into 10 digits. Fashion MNIST, which is for classification of grayscale images into 10 different fashion items and CIFR-10, which is for classification of color images into 10 classes. We use three different networks in the experiments, LENET-5, DenseNet-40, and MobileNet V2. The three networks have 61,000, 176,000, and more than 2 million parameters, respectively. We first examine the effect of the approximation method that we proposed. The time savings from discarding the Heisen term is significant. We perform our experiments with an AMD Ryzen CPU, SSD hard drive, 32 gigabytes of RAM, and two NVIDIA 2080 Ti GPUs. We train the networks for one epoch and track the contribution of all training data points throughout the training trajectory. We find that computing the Heisen vector product requires an unacceptable amount of time. On a medium-sized network, DenseNet 40, with 176,000 parameters, training for one epoch takes 49 hours. After removing the Heisen, this reduces to merely three minutes. We observe about 38-fold acceleration on the net 5 and more than 900-fold acceleration on dense net 40. We note that these numbers may change as the underlying hardware changes. We now empirically examine the approximation error. In these experiments, we train the Lenet 5 network on the Fashion Amnesty dataset for 200 epochs and compute the norm of the difference between the Heisen aware method and the Hydra approximation. The results show that the error is bounded and eventually converges to a small number. This agrees with our theoretical result. We further compare Hydra with influence function. Although ground truth contributions are hard to acquire, both techniques can be seen as approximations to the full trajectory Hessian aware contribution values. Here we compute the percentage of wrong signs in the approximated contribution. That is, if the Hessian aware full trajectory method considers a data point to have positive contribution, but the approximation method considers it to have negative contribution when error is counted, and vice versa. From the diagram, Hydra results are much closer to the full trajectory Heisen aware method than influence functions. This also suggests that ignoring the full trajectory can lead to about 10 to 15 percent of sign errors. We also evaluate different methods' ability to identify data points with wrong labels. To create a synthetic dataset, we first randomly change the labels of 80% of the training data. After that, we use influence functions and Hydra to identify the 80% of training data with the least contribution to the validation set. We remove these data points and retrain the network on the remaining 20%. For all three datasets, 
Hydra performs better than influence functions. As we move from the easy MNIST dataset to the relatively difficult Cipher 10 dataset, the performance gap between Hydra and influence functions widens. We now look at how computation time scales with the number of model parameters and the number of training data whose contribution we track. Note here that we use the entire training data set but do not always track the contribution of each and every data point. We vary the number of tracked data points from 400 to 2000 and 10,000. We use LoNet 5, DenseNet 40, and MobileNet V2 with different number of parameters. Theoretical analysis shows that the computation time should scale linearly with the number of tracked examples and the number of model parameters. The experimental result confirm our analysis. The average time per data point or per model parameter does not increase if to be track more data points or use larger models. In fact, the average time slightly decreases as we come to full utilization of the massively parallel GPU architecture. Finally, we show some example result of Hydra. In this experiment, we compute the contribution from a class of training data to a class of test data. We do this on the three datasets, MNIST, Fashion MNIST, and Cipher 10. The rows indicate training data classes, and the columns indicate test data classes. The contribution values between classes are computed as the average of all possible pairs of data points. After that, we normalize by row and column. We observe that the most positive contributions happen on the diagonal. This indicates the training data class contribute the most to its own class. In addition, we notice symmetric patterns in the negative contributions. For example, the digit 4 and digit 9 contribute negatively to each other. This is probably because these digits are too similar, so that strengthening the probability of one will likely weaken the other. In conclusion, we have presented the Hydra method for evaluating the contribution of training data to validation data or test data. Hydra computes how training data influence neural network decisions throughout the SGD trajectory. We provide an approximation technique that removes the Hessian matrix and simplifies computation. We prove upper bounds for the approximation error. This provides up to 970-fold acceleration in practice, though the number may change depending on the underlying hardware. The experiments show that the approximation error of Hydra is small, which verifies the theoretical result. Hydra also outperforms influence function in identifying noisy labels. We have open sourced the code for download. For any questions, please feel free to email us. Thank you for your attention.